All right, so this is a review of quadratic geometry, and we're going to do a few linear equation solving questions today. All right, so this is the learning targets that you're going to have to know for the next quiz. I will give this sheet to you with examples as a review for the quiz later. All right, on the quiz, it asks at the top for you to write the formula for distance, midpoint, and slope. Now, I'm going to be a little. What do I want to say? I'm not going to be super picky about how that looks. For example, I like, if I had to know distance formula, I would say do this. Change in x squared plus change in y squared and then square root. What is that based on? The most famous theorem of all. Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Does this sound familiar to anybody? So if you have, oh, big dot theorem needed right there. And we'll go with there. I can't see that at all. What is that dot? Negative three, negative two. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, three. Did I get that right? Okay. If you want to know the distance from there to there, you're really just doing, oh, that was pretty good drawing, Hofbauer. Oh, <laughs> it'll get worse as I go on, I promise. Um, you're trying to find the Pythagorean theorem, right? So how far across are they on the x's? You probably learned it like this. x2 minus x1 quantity squared. Does that sound familiar? Okay. My head says from negative 3 to positive 5 is 8. Anybody get that? From negative 3 to 0 is 3. Then over to 5 is 5 more. That's 8. Okay. y2 minus y1. Negative 2 to positive 3 is how far? The y's are here and here. Negative 2 to positive 3. 5, so we had an 8 squared plus a 5 squared. Okay, if you wanted to write that, negative 3 minus 5 quantity squared plus negative 2 minus 3 quantity squared square root, well, you can. But I'm just doing the first part of my head. It's 8 squared plus 5 squared, which is 64 plus 25, which is 89. Square root of 89. I don't think it's, is it prime? I think it's prime. It doesn't reduce. We good? All right. So what I'm trying to say is, on the quiz, when it says write the distance formula, this will be okay with me or this will be okay. So just make up your mind that you can do that. Everybody know what that little triangle means? Change in, which means what operation? Subtract. Everybody okay? All right, so let's practice. Which one do you want to do? Two? Okay. Let's do it the complicated way first. X is 4 minus negative 8. Y is 3 minus 6. Uh, let's see, this is 12, and this is negative 3, but if you're going to do it on your calculator, you can't do get it right unless you put the parentheses around it, right? With the squared on the outside. Would it matter if you forgot the negative altogether? When you square it, it's going to become positive. So I just leave the negative off. Okay. So it's going to be 144 plus 9 is square root of 153, which actually does simplify. I'm not going to you want to simplify. What goes in there? Anybody know? Somebody said, see, one number that goes in there. Three goes in there. Three goes in there 51 times. Anybody know what goes into 51? I don't think 9 does know, but 3 does again. So it's 3 times 3 times 17. Well, this is really what? <laughs> 3 times 3. It's really 9 times 17, so it would break down as 3 square roots of 17. How many of you have no idea what I just did? Simplifying radicals. Do you remember seeing it very vaguely? How about an easier one real quick? Square root of 50. The number that goes in there that is a perfect square. What perfect square goes in there? 
So you could break that apart as 25 and 2. And the square root of 25, he's perfect. So I always teach he gets out of jail. He gets out of the little jail and starts his new life over as a perfect 5. So it's 5 times the square root of 2. Okay. If you have been a million years since you simplified radicals, I will have a practice sheet in the remediation bin and we can practice it some more. Okay. On the quiz, I would probably take square root of 153. I think I actually made sure that it didn't reduce, so we didn't have to do that. Just leave it square root, okay? All right, do we need to practice again? Or you got distance? What? We should do one more? I love that you said that because there's five people in the room or 10 people in the room who are going, I need more practice, but they were too, like, I'm not gonna ask. Okay, somebody tell me what to write. Where do you want me to start? Okay, you want to go that order? Negative 3 minus negative 2. Does it matter if I do negative 2 minus negative 3 or negative 3 minus negative 2? No. And because I'm squaring it, it doesn't even matter if I do the y's in a different order. Okay. The Hofbauer method. How far apart are negative 3 and negative 2 on the number line? How far apart are 5 and 4 on the number line? What's the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared? You got to square them first. 1 squared is 1 plus 1 squared is 1 is square root of 2. We good? This should have turned out the same, right? Because it was negative 1 squared is 1. This is negative 1 squared is 1. Any questions? Remind me tomorrow if you need me to do more. Midpoint. How do you find the middle of two numbers? You got a really good grade and you got a really bad grade. How do you find the middle? That's slope. What? Atom together divide by two. Does that work? Atom together divide by two. So we are going to average the X's and we're going to average the Y's. How do you, oh, that's supposed to be an apostrophe. I don't know what happened there. How do you average two numbers? Midpoint, two numbers. Yep x1 plus x2 divided by 2 will give you your new x, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Remember this now? Is it easier just to think I'm averaging the x's and an average in the y's? It is in my head. All right, can I not do an example on that little paper over there and go ahead and do the next two together? Will that be all right? All right, so where are the x's? These guys, right? 8 and negative 4. I'm adding and divide by 2, so I get, I got 2. Did someone else get 2? And then the y's are back here, which is what? Big fat zero. All right. So can you do this one on your own? Who can do the X's? Three halves is a really nice answer. It's also exact. If it does have an exact decimal, 1.5, I would be fine with. Okay. If it, just leave it a fraction for the most part, guys. It's, it's exact. If you want to give me the decimal, I would prefer if it's not exact, you leave it as the fraction, but 1.5 is exact. What about the Ys? Anybody get it already? Whoops. I'm doing it in my head in advance. Look at that. I'm cheating. Okay. It was a negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2, right? Did I get it right? Any questions? Midpoint, we're all going to get those right, yes? Okay, then slope. Somebody said a minute ago slope was change in y over change in x. That's a fine definition. How else could you write it? Good job. Would it matter if you put y2 minus y1? Not as long as you did the same thing on the bottom, right? 
rise over run is a great definition when you're graphing. When I'm just asking you to find the slope between two points, I would rather you gave me one or the other of those, okay? Do I need to do one on the picture or can we just go to the examples? Okay, X, X, Y, Y, but which numbers do we like first? The Y's. So we could go 13 minus eight. That seems like a good plan. We'll talk about in a second, you can go the other way. And since we went 13 minus eight, we have to go negative 16 minus negative four. How many of you want to calculate a really bad right now? Nobody's gonna fess up. I know some of you hate integers. There's calculators over there if you wanna grab one. Um, this is five, this is what? Negative 12, did I get it right? If we were flipping it over and doing it in the other, uh, not flipping it over, just kidding. If you're doing it in the other order, so you did eight minus 13, then you would do negative four minus negative 16, you'd get negative five over positive 12. Are those the same thing, guys? Yeah, doesn't matter where the negative is. This, we would maybe think go up five and left 12. This would be down five and right 12. Same difference, all the same line. Okay, so do I need to do another one or you got slope? You're gonna remember to put the Y's on the top, right? And this can be reduced. Did anybody already do it? Did I get three sevenths right? I went really in my head. Thanks. Please tell me if I do arithmetic wrong or anything wrong. If I start talking about slope being change in x over change in y, just throw something at me. All right. On the back, real fast. How do you remember how to graph? This form is called slope intercept, and it is a y intercept. This one doesn't have a number back there, so we start at the origin, and we go from there, how do we graph this slope? Up four over one, down four left one. If anybody's thinking I'm going really, really fast and you don't remember any of this, I'm willing to work with you. <laughs> But if if this is overwhelming, it's going to get a lot harder, a lot faster. So let me know if you need to pass tomorrow to see your counselor. I don't want to lose anybody, but I also don't want to freak you out. So this one starts at positive 3. So the y-intercept, can we give me the ordered pair for that? Yeah. Across 0 and up 3 is where that intercept is. From there, how do you, oh, that was a really good circle. I almost didn't hit any of it. You can do this or this, right? What's the top one kind of asking you to do? Down three to the right two would work. Is that here? And this one kind of means what? Up three and left two, is that the same line? I get an A plus today. I got. I mean, the lines are crooked, but they're kind of hitting the dots. Okay, you guys have no idea how hard that is on this stupid tablet. Um, we also have what's called the Hofbauer Big Dot Theorem. That's when I have to do this to make it go through the dot. Okay, you ask Miss Lentz. She uses that theorem in her class. All right, x equals two. Anybody know which way that one goes? When I get confused, I had a teacher who did this for me. He said the X is always two, right? This can be anything. So if I go over two up zero, over two down three, over two up five. Now do you remember what kind of line it is? The X's are all, oh, that was bad. I need a really big right about there. <laughs> really, it's a perfectly vertical line. Oh my gosh. I didn't drink my lunch, I promise. All right, what kind of slope? Slope, slope, slope. Yes, because it has a change in Y. It does have a change in Y. It goes up and down. So you'd get a number on the top, and then you'd get a zero on the bottom, which is undefined slope. All right, 13. Ideas? There's the way you learned in Algebra 1 and the pre-calc way. What do you want to do? What did Algebra 1 teach you to do? 
subtract the x and divide everything by 2. So we get y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. So then we start at 3. We go down 1 and over 2. Okay. Can I teach you a different way? I don't care which way you do it. I'm not going to know the difference. But there's a little thing called the intercept method that says if I put a 0 in for the x, well, this will be gone, and it'll say 2y equals 6, which would make this 3, yes? What if I made the y 0? If I made the y 0, this would be gone, and it would just say what? x equals 6. So over 0 up 3, and over 6 up 0 are the intercepts. Same line. Okay? So by making each one zero, I got two points. I drew the line. It's up to you. Y equals negative three. All the Y values are negative three. So it is a horizontal line. To, oh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, I'm wasting that. I should stop the video and start over. I could see I have a tool that does this, right? Here. How's this? Oh, yeah. Y equals negative three. Clearly. Um, slope? Zero. Yep. If you were to do change in y, there would be none. Change in x, you would get some number, and zero over something is zero. All right. Anybody do the intercepts for me on this one? If x is zero, what will it say? It'll say negative y equals negative three, right? If I put a zero in for the x, which means y would be three. If I put a zero in for the y, it would just say x equals negative 3. So I got over 0, up 3, left 3, up 0. All right, if you solved for the y, you'd have to subtract the x and then do what? Or just change all the signs? Yep. Is that the same line? Started at 3, up 1, and over 1? We good? Is that the last one? Really? Okay. What time are we out of here? Oh, you got. Go. You got six minutes or three minutes to do six problems, right? All right. Oh, I'm not done. Shoot. Just kidding. The other thing that's in worksheet three that we didn't talk about is some really messy fractions equations. Okay. You don't have these, you might want to write this one somewhere if you got room on the side of your paper or something. Because anybody who would like to say fraction is an F word in math that I don't like. Okay. So what I would like you to learn to do is to get rid of the fractions. Because if you don't, you have a much greater chance of getting this wrong. If you have a calculator, now would be the time to whip it out and help off power. I don't even care if it's on your phone because this is going to take too long without a calculator. All right, we need a common denominator for 47, 8, and 5. Common denominator. Well, 8 and 5 go into 40. Does 7 go into 40? No, so we might have to use something like 40 times 7, which is... <laughs> 280. That's a lovely number. We're going to multiply. We don't have to actually get a denominator of 280. We're just going to multiply everything by 280. Is that legal? Multiply to one side, multiply to the other. Golden rule of algebra, right? As long as you do it to both sides, you're good? Okay. So I need somebody with a calculator. 280 times what? 189. And then there's a fraction bar, so that means I push divided by 40. Okay, equals, now I'm doing this one. 280 times 2 divided by 7. I can do that one. Because 7 goes into 280, 40 times times 2 is 80. Did I get it right? That one had an N, don't lose your N. Okay. 280 times 17 divided by 8. Oh, no, 34, 6, 680? That was a guess. Anybody? 280 times 17 divided by 8? 
595? Yep, totally wrong, Huffbar. Way to go. Okay, 280 times 6 divided by 5. 336. And that one gets 10. Then are you good from there? Okay, if we add like terms over here, I think we get 416. Did I add that right? If we subtract 595, leave your answers as fractions, reduced fractions, improper fractions, okay? Anybody need help finding their next class? I really need to finish this problem. So I have it on the video. What is this? Eight. This is now 11. This is now 12. Yeah. Yep. Um, eventually, 4A and B are going to be assigned the odds as well. But for tonight, this is all we've covered so far, I think. Um, I think that reduces odds. odds. What for tonight? Just take my pretty leopard one and then remind me at the beginning of class tomorrow, and I'll sign one out for you. Okay.